Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer, and today we're going to take a look at something with CineSamples. It's March 2023 and they've just released the new update, which is 2.0 to CineStrings. So let's take a look at making a special template just for CineStrings with TouchOSC. <laughs> CineStrings Core 2.0 is a pretty big change. The UX is completely different, and for me and the template that I was using, this changes a lot of things. Because before I would use uh, multiple tracks with layers to put in different sounds, like different articulations. But now everything is condensed into what could be one iteration of contact without having to have multiple violin ones. You know, one doing legatos, one doing staccatos, things like that. Now it's much easier to switch between the different playing techniques. So let's take a look at how we could set that up in Touch OSC to make it simpler for us. And to do this, what we're going to do is use key switches, which in the past I've always used CC changes, uh, but I think it's going to be, uh, you'll see why I think this works really well. And for this, we're going to use Reaper. So let's take a look at how it's all changed with CineStrings 2.0. This is my Reaper template, and we have uh, me recording here in the background. And this is Contact 7, and let's go ahead and load in CineStrings Core, the new one, and let's play with the violins today. And you can see, which you've probably seen from some of their promotional materials, things are pretty different. Everything looks quite different from before, uh, including this new area for uh, controlling your different articulations, and then this whole area for mapping these articulations. And what's nice is they've given you the opportunity to map this in a lot of different ways with multiple conditions. You could use key switches plus a pedal, you could use CC, you could use a lot of different things. So I'm just going to show how I see it working with Touch OSC, but of course there are a million different ways to make this work. So what we're going to do is basically update my Touch OSC template for CineStrings Core, and we're going to have controls, buttons to control all of these to change this, and then some of these knobs as well that I see useful. So first off, let's go ahead and build out this template. We're back in Touch OSC, and I'm using the desktop version uh, to build this out because I think it's a lot easier, and my iPad is already connected. So if you're unfamiliar with some of this stuff, check out some of the earlier videos on how to do that with Reaper. So first I want to set up the control for each one of these uh, different playing techniques. And there are 12 different playing techniques, so let's add in 12 buttons. Alright, so let's go ahead and add a button. And what I already know, because I've done some math here, I want this to be 100 by 100. That way it fits kind of perfectly in one of these slots. And then we're going to need a label to know what the playing technique is. And I'm gonna get rid of the outline because I don't want that. And let's make this 100 as well. It's really nice to see that the snapping on this works really well. So here's how I see the design working for this. Let's go ahead and copy and paste. Copy two of them, paste. And here we go, we have kind of a grid. I'm going to space these out here a little differently. And I think that's a nice looking column. And then we're going to copy paste, move that over and then copy paste one more time. And these are going to be all of our articulations. The next thing I want to control are the dynamics and the speed. So I'm going to add in two faders and we'll make this a little bigger. And let's copy and paste this over. And then the last thing, which I want to control our expression as well as our vibrato, we're going to do an XY. And we'll make it just a little tall. So this does leave space for other things, uh, which is perfectly fine. But for right now, this is what we'll use. And let's add some labels to this. And then let's copy and bring this one over. And again, I'm going to get rid of the outlines for these. Great, so this is our template. Let's go ahead and name all of the articulations. And then we're also going to name what these faders are.
Great. So there's a ton of different ways you could have laid this out. Um, this makes sense to me right now. Uh, let's go ahead and color so that we can organize how these are going to work. Um, I'm going to have these be kind of like a bluish. Let's make these yellow. Uh, let's see. I think uh, we could do like an orange here. I think harmonics are probably a purpley pinkish something like that legato we're gonna make that let's go with a green actually i want bartok pits because it's also a type of pits let's make that also an orangish and then colenio maybe like a pink cool this looks good to me and this one let's go ahead and make sure we get rid of the outlines on this so this is pretty straightforward. All we have to do now, we're gonna give these key switches. So the first one we wanna control is gonna be the legato. And in this uh, interface, it's pretty nice. If you hover over it, you can see at the bottom what the name of each one is. But legato is gonna be the main one that we want to start with. So let's look at how we map this. So if you open this gear up here and then enable custom mapping, they do have a lot of presets here if you wanna just use that. What we're gonna do is create our own. Uh, so we can load up that and we're going to create this. So let's go ahead and add all of the articulations that we're going to control. So we're going to start with legato. Or for these, what it's calling it is sustain. And you can use this a uh, little menu thing on the side here to scroll up and down. You can see we have everything. So if you wanted, you could add a second condition, uh, for instance, the pedal or velocity. For this, what we're gonna do is just have a key switch. So I'm going to set these up from the very bottom. So it's gonna go key switch, and then you could select where you want it. And as soon as you do, you see it is giving you the, uh, the color of the note. And I'm gonna turn off latching as well. So let's go ahead and give each one of these a key switch for the first 12 notes. And yes, this is a painfully slow process. And now let's go ahead and save this. Save as here, just because we know that in reality, things crash all the time. So here we have our key switches, and you can see that uh, they all change. Okay, and we know that everything is not latching, so it's all good to go. So only when we push this down is it all popping up. So let's go ahead and map these with our Touch OSC template. And thankfully we went in order, so it should be pretty easy. Let's go ahead and add a MIDI message to each one of these buttons. So let's select this first legato here, and let's add a MIDI message. And what we're going to do is note on. And the channel, we're going to use one for this. And let's go ahead and set up a constant in our first note here. So now we have it for legato. Let's check this in Reaper. So if we come into Reaper here, and I'm going to go ahead and arm the violins. If I'm playing my MIDI keyboard here, nothing's happening. Now if I hold legato, you can see that the keyboard lights up. And I get sound. If I let go, it turns off. So let's go ahead and add the rest of these. So let's click on the button, right click here and take messages, and I want to copy the MIDI message. Now let's select the spiccato button, Holding shift, let's select all the rest of the buttons. Right click here and then messages, paste, MIDI. And now we have, if we scroll down here, we have a note on and we have a constant. So then we just have to increase the number for each one. This is two, three. And this is the beauty of setting this all up in order. So it's nice and organized.
perfect so this is all set up let's go ahead and check this out all right, so here in Reaper, let's go ahead and arm our violins. I'm gonna push the tremolo button and you can see it pops up there. And then let's go to pizzicatos. And you can see they're all working. Harmonics is not working. So as I was going through that, I forgot about the Bartok pits and left it out of the UX. So we have to add that in for the mapping. So let's go ahead and change this. So we're gonna get rid of these. So this is where I left out the Bartok pits. So we go ahead and plus and let's add the Bartok. And then that'll be a key switch. Let's go ahead and add the half step trill, the whole step trill, and then harmonics again. And then this will start at A flat, A, B flat, and B. So now if we try that out with our template, if I hit harmonics, we can see them. If we go to trills, So it's actually a pretty simple setup. Uh, key switches are really nice, and of course you could do this in the past with things, but I think it's definitely a lot more organized with 2.0. And of course, I like having it on Touch OSC. As I've talked about before, I always forget what I program to what on my keyboard. And also, if you're using something like I am, which is this ASM Hydrosynth, uh, it's not a full keyboard, so sometimes I'd have to go with the octave up or octave down button to reach the key switches. So this working with Touch OSC is a bit easier. Let's go ahead and check out how it works with uh, some of this latching. If we were to go push the harmonics button, I'm not holding the button down, it's just working the entire time. Same with everything else that's got the latching on. Now latching can be great, there's nothing wrong with using that. I prefer to not have it latching, that way I can just make sure I'm controlling how things are different. Uh, but it's definitely a great way if you need to perform live, especially you don't wanna hold those buttons down. I recommend using the latching within the UX as opposed to using it within Touch OSC because you'll probably get a feedback error if you were to click something off in uh, your DAW and not push the button off on your Touch OSC. Sometimes the toggles can get confused. So it's better to do the latching in the system and not in Touch OSC. All right, so these are all mapped and good to go with our key switches. Now let's set up MIDI CC to control these. And it's great to use some of the natural ones or the ones that are already kind of programmed. For instance, if we add a MIDI message here, we change this one to a constant because dynamics, this is gonna be the mod wheel, just CC1. And for speed, let's go ahead and add a MIDI message. This one, another constant, and we're gonna make this 16. And then for our XY here, we need two messages. So we have the X axis here, vibrato. We're gonna make this CC2. And then our expression, let's add one for the Y axis here. We have to change this over to Y, turn off X. And we're gonna change this again to a constant and expression is 11. So now that we have this all set up, let's go ahead and check it out in Reaper. All right, so we have it armed. Let's go ahead and check out our dynamics here. If we move that, that's all good to go. CC1, you could also uh, learn if it wasn't working, you can add that. Check out our speed, and you see that's not working. So let's right click here, learn MIDI CC. And now we got it under control. Our vibrato down here, if I move that on the lower axis, the X axis, that's all good. And then if we were recording, um, we could use the expression here for our uh, playing. So let's go ahead and check that out. Let's go ahead and try uh, legato. You could also use the expression. And this is one of the reasons that latching is kind of useful. So if you were to 
go back through here, go up to the top, sustains, let's make that latching. So now we push legato, it's latching here. If I press some notes, play something here and turn it up. So you can see there's a lot of benefits to using the uh, CC and the key switch controls with Touch OSC. Uh, I think what they've done in CineStrings 2.0 is really nice. I like the new uh, UX and I like the idea that I'm not going to have to have so many different instances of contact running on a variety of tracks. But there's one more step that would make this a little bit easier and that is adding note names for the MIDI in uh, Reaper. Now this is something that's kind of specific to Reaper, but a really nice feature that I love to use. So this is our MIDI editor in Reaper. And we have all the keys here, but it would be nice if we had some uh, notes going on in here, it would be to see what the key switches are so we know where we're at in the MIDI editor. So a great way around this is adding or loading in note CC names. So let's take a look at how you can do that. What we're going to make is a text file. So this is a really simple text file, and you can see I've already named it CineStrings underscore violins. So I'm going to add in what the note names are. That way we can see what the key switches are. So this first one was legato, and we're going to fill them all in. I also like to use all caps. Uh, as you'll see, it makes it easier to read. So let's go ahead and save this now. And I save this inside a folder for all of my different templates. Uh, just makes it easier to find. So you save it in here, and we will, yes, replace violins. And then in Reaper, this is our MIDI track here. And let's go ahead and file, note CC names, load. And let's find that file. And right here, violins open that up and you can see down here it shows the names of our key switches and this is really helpful so part of the reason this is as useful is if you had a section here where you were uh, just looking at what the notes are and you didn't show what all the key switches are you would have to remember which one is which so this way you can see down here when you're going through your score or your MIDI piano roll you can see oh this section here is pizzicato and this is a tremolo. So it's just another way to see what's going on and not having to remember uh, each one of these. So CineStrings 2.0, I think it sounds great. I like what they did with the uh, interface here. And as you can see, it's pretty nice to control all of the different playing techniques. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that if you hate key switches, but hey, try out Touch OSC and see if this works for you. Also, if you come up with a better idea, definitely let me know. I'd love to learn a little bit more about how you're working and what you find works for composing or producing and any time that you're using Touch OSC or all of these crazy different DAWs that we're working with. So great work to Cine samples. I really hope they update some of the other systems as well, like Cine Winds and Cine Brass. I'm glad to see that they're taking care of these legacy libraries and updating them. So hopefully this helps you with some of your work. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll look at more with Touch OSC and all this different crazy production software. So thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you next time.